Hello, my name is Rahul Sharma and I'm the President for Public Sector for AWS India and South Asia. I'm thrilled to welcome you to the AWS reInvent at the Intel Spotlight session, 1.3 billion lives saved, a dream that came true with the power of partnerships. India is a land of a billion dreams, dreams that move people. However, in 2021, this entire nation suddenly came to a halt. What followed was an unprecedented catastrophe, the second wave of COVID. This tested the ability of our nation's health infrastructure to provide timely support and help the citizens overcome these unprecedented challenges. However, as they say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. The indomitable human spirit staged a fight back and everyone, from the government to frontline workers, to the citizens and technology came together. One of the biggest challenges the government had to overcome was timely vaccination to all. India's demographic, economic and geographically diverse landscape added to this complex puzzle. This is where the might of the public-private sector partnership came to fore. Government, along with various industry pioneers, created this road to recovery and rolled out the world's largest vaccination drive, impacting the lives of 1.3 billion citizens in India. The result was COVID, a world-class vaccination facilitation solution created in record time. The COVID application built on AWS Cloud and powered by Intel technology was launched on January 15, 2021 for 30 million health and frontline workers. The key components of the COVID application use Intel's technology based on EC2, RDS, Redshift, Elastic Cache instances. These components play a key role delivering the extreme scale compute requirements that COVID has. The platform was open for 60 plus eight citizens on March 1st, 2021, and within a month for the 45 plus eight citizens with a target vaccination of 300 million citizens by August 2021. However, due to the sudden surge in COVID cases during the second wave in India, the Government of India opened the vaccination portal for 18 plus citizens on the 28th April and also announced plans to vaccinate 900 million citizens by December 2021. And I'm delighted to share that by the 21st October, 1 billion doses were administered, highlighting the tremendous speed and scale of this application. COVID today is championing the world's largest vaccination drive by protecting all Indians and providing easy access to vaccines. The simple and intuitive user interface ensures inclusion of even technologically challenged people. Today, I bring to you the experts behind this truly inspiring application. I would like to invite Mr. David Nayak, Director, National E-Governance Division, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology for the Government of India. Mr. Nayak has 25 years of comprehensive experience in managing large-scale e-governance projects. He has a strong background in program development with an outstanding history of managing projects from initial conception through development to implementation. He is especially skilled at strategic planning and problem resolution. He has led conceptualization to implementation of large-scale projects like Coven, DigiLocker, API Setu, OpenForge, WCD Potion Tracker, Public Distribution System, Commercial Tax, VAT, Excise, Mining, Transport and Police Modernization. Mr. Nayak. Thank you, Rahul, and thanks to Intel for giving me this opportunity. National E-Governance Division was created by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology as an independent business division under the Digital India Corporation. So, uh, journey starts with the NEGD in 2009 as a think tank um, for the Ministry of Electronics and Information as well as for the other departments of the government to support them in the e-governance. From 2015, this organization is changed to, to build the large scale platforms in the country. And like we started our journey with the DigiLocal, the first project. Then we started to build a national academic depository. Then we built Umang, uh, another platform. Then we built the Poson Tracker. And okay, then we started the journey with the COVID. The journey with the, with the NGD, it is always a private non public partnership. I joined, I think, uh, in uh, January 13th, uh, it is being decided that okay, COVID will be open to the public uh, in March, but uh, we need to have to have a platform that can scale. Now, what we require one is the people, then is the technology that is the to develop that the one the skillful people and as well as the technology. That's where it started the journey with the discussion with the Amazon of services as well as um, the technology people other the stakeholders how that we can build a platform. So that is why that uh, journey started in mostly in October or something. Then 
we started the journey but uh, in between what happened other stakeholders came the decision to be a public partnership is the from the day one because uh, otherwise uh, for a government to scale this type of um, service delivery for the people of india is not possible so that's why that aws partnership was happened consideration is the technology actually the one is the technology then also the scale uh, to handle so that is the two decision to take because yes as a part of government uh, definitely our procurement processes are we, we don't know that oh, what is the scale we require because the scale we don't know that the load we don't know the uh, uh, what are the things we have to do on the requirement basis that we require the technology to help you to scale so that is why that that decisions needs to go as uh, something because uh, you can't buy the hardware in the um, uh, during the requirement time rather than we have to scale somewhere um, uh, as per the requirement so that's why the technology to be support like database to be scale like application servers to be scale uh, other technologies is to handle like the um, uh, analytics and other things to handle so that's why that the, the decision to go to cloud was very much important otherwise you can't handle the loads and the requirement of the decision to go for pay per use rather than uh, building something in a capex model of th- um, some hundreds of crores you don't know what is actually requirement altogether i think that is the first part is the cost uh, definitely and also the time that uh, how much the require your requirement altogether to estimate like a country like a india from the billions of people and uh, billions of hits so even also as a person I, i i still don't know that how much capacity of the requirement we require to handle the covid what will be the procurement size of the hardware and softwares uh, that, that that is also the another part then third is the what are the softwares we have to take a decision what are the software you require may not be that software you buy may not be, uh, that may not scale all together so that's why that the one is the interoperability system should be built but you require something to be scale choosing the cloud definitely one is the definitely the paper use oh, even if we don't know how much uh, cost we have to incur um, uh, as a part but as well as the to save the government procurement models rather than go for the paper use models ki whatever we will use that, that that will be definitely as a power of our requirements then uh, another part is the security i think that point of discussion uh, we, I, we generally say that now that uh, definitely that government is using the virtualization and uh, the, they are having their own cloud data centers so uh, yes as a part of the uh, governments to come from the uh, own premise data center to a cloud i think this is also one decision that that we always feel that as a part of the technology the solution providers has been taken care as a part of the providers from uh, in their perspective i think uh, that another belief point of the security is the yes that uh, the team or uh, the stakeholders who are building the solution so they are also equally responsible of managing the security so that's why that i always say that security should be built during the start of the whole how the application we are building so that's why that that security concerned as a part of part yes when we are building a application that should the builder should take care of the security so that as a part of cloud i don't think that that security is a concern for us so definitely the scale was the concern and optimization of the cost uh, also not going for the capex part of the investment rather than go as per your requirements actually the conscious decision we have taken to use the aws cloud that is the one real decision that time being taken but uh, if i say my journey uh, started with the aws team uh, the cloud team to analyze the issues the inside of the application being hosted in the aws and analyze the areas to need to scale the application as a part so that is one area that that engineers yes as a part of aws you are confident that uh, you have the infrastructure you have the technology been there but uh, the most important aspect is uh, the team coming together with the technology team of the development teams as well as the aws team uh, as a joint together to have the what are the key areas need to be improved that is the most critical areas part of the things we decided 
okay it should be a joint team and uh, the teams uh, the aws team will provide the insights of the story what are the happening into the platform that is the most critical part of the application uh, to scale so that is one area that where that we work with together with the aws team to bring as a part of the inside of the application and also the development to to the fix the things as a part of development you have to look at that what is the optimization you are doing as a part of to scale so that is the two areas that aws team actually helped us as a part to scale we was never concerned about something called okay as a developmental practices we always think that okay build it from the security as a practice but aws also providing the great tools in the top of the applications to look at that aspects as a aws engineers i am definitely thankful to them because they come to help us from the day one they help us as a part improve the systems not only the performance that also the security aspect of the thing vaccinating over a billion plus population a country of india's size i think the complexity and diversity is mammoth and the robustness of the platform altogether we say that it was handled and 400 million registration as a part of the last year and a little over 6 months this itself is a big uh, feat so in tech platform has achieved the scale in such a short span of time so that is more important as we have to look at that covin platform handled around 13.7 million over 3 with over 3 billion seats on the same website within 18 hours of the open to the 18 to 45 age group when, when we say that okay that this platform is being hit by 3 billion seats it is a regular hit actually it's not the only one day in that time but it has been a regular hit uh, when we opened up to 18 to 45 age groups this is because that is the way that we use the cloud of the aws and that is why that we are being handled because that is why that we have never imagined that 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 uh, when we will open to the public of the age group 18 to 45 that will hit by 3 3 billion of hits to the platforms uh, otherwise uh, if i say that uh, this is the technology we have to carry forward because as a country uh, definitely uh, if you want to scale like with a billion uh, the population of the billions if you want to scale and that healthcare needs to scale okay that this is why that we require some cloud platform to be there and i think uh, denial of service should not happen because uh, we have a business of the service delivery of the government needs to be happen so that's why that the covin is the actually the great case study for us for the country like uh, india and for the others also because uh, the way it is being developed the timeline the uh, the, uh, the technology and that cloud we have taken to well, i think uh, it is again that uh, thanks to the aws team because they stand by us for the last one and a half years with us uh, and we are looking forward to the advancement and innovation is yet to come i think uh, india is, uh, is uh, one of the billion uh, people country so ensuring all citizens across india are able to receive quality of medical care especially during the time of need i think that is more important for all of us so thank you rahul again and over to you thank you sir it's been a sheer privilege to partner with you and your team to build this application at a time when it was needed the most it is times like these that the industry pioneers have come together to make such a dream come true our path to successful implementation is also based on our partners we could not have made this possible without the support of our partners intel and map my india and the future as we see it can only happen with our partners working closely with us i'd like to recognize one of our partners for their passion and perseverance as they continue to help build such massive applications to support our customers and communities aws and intel have a 16 plus year relationship dedicated to developing building and supporting cloud services that are designed to manage cost complexity accelerate business outcomes and scale to meet the current and future computing requirements I would like to invite Sandra Rivera, Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Data Center and AI Group at Intel Corporation, to share how the power of Intel and AWS partnership supported the building of the Coven application. Sandra leads Intel's development of leadership data center products for a cloud-based world, including Intel Xeon and field programmable gate array products. She also drives the company's overall artificial intelligence strategy and product roadmap. Welcome, Sandra. Hello everyone, I'm Sandra Rivera and I lead the data center and AI group for Intel. The pandemic has been a devastating force for the entire world. It has taken so much from so many. The prevalence of COVID-19 requires each of us to do all we can to keep ourselves, our families, and our communities safe. Technology has proven to be a game changer in helping us overcome this crisis. And I'm extremely proud of the joint success 
of the Cohen vaccination platform in India, which is supporting possibly the largest vaccination drive in history. At peak, the platform scaled to more than 3.2 billion hits a day on CloudFront and the load balancer scaled to 1 billion hits a day. Like many national projects, this project is a strong testament to the power of the collaboration between AWS and Intel. It's inspiring to see how closely our teams work together on technology for good. For more than 16 years, AWS and Intel have worked together to develop, build, and support cloud services that are designed to manage cost and complexity, accelerate business outcomes, and scale to meet current and future computing requirements. Intel processors provide the foundation of many cloud computing services deployed on AWS, including Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instances, known as EC2. These have the largest breadth, global reach, and availability of compute instances across AWS geographies. Amazon EC2 cloud computing instances count on Intel architecture to provide strong data protection, fast processing with large data volumes, and service flexibility without impacting performance. We look forward to bringing even greater performance and cost optimization to the solution by modernizing the platform with the latest third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors known as Ice Lake. AWS and Intel share a passion for innovation and technology. Together, we create cutting edge solutions that enrich the lives of every person on Earth. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. We also empower a large partner ecosystem of value added resellers, system integrators, independent software vendors, small and medium businesses, and startups to enable a generation of technology companies to build a scalable solution. I would now like to invite Mr. Rohan Verma, CEO and Executive Director, Map My India. He's a Stanford University and London Business School alumnus and has been with Map My India for 17 plus years. Map My India is India's leader in advanced digital maps, location based software, and IoT technologies. We started digitally mapping India in 1995, when no other digital maps existed for the country. And we've made it our mission since then to bring all the potentially infinite use cases of digital maps and location technologies to as many people in government, in uh, uh, personal lives, as well as in the business world. To the point where we are building a digital map twin a four-dimensional, high-definition, information-rich map of the real world that we update in near real time. When COVID happened, it was probably one of the largest challenges faced by humanity. We thought about how digital maps could benefit uh, society during this difficult time. And when the government of India announced its COVID platform, where they would provide vaccination to this entire population of 130 crore people or 1.3 billion people, we decided to support the government of India and our citizens. Since March, 2020, we've been continuously and in real time mapping all the containment zones where uh, outbreaks have happened of cases the testing centers, treatment centers, isolation centers, and then the vaccination centers so that we could help people figure out where the nearest one was and how to get there. To remove one stress from the lives of people stressed a lot already because of the pandemic. And also to help the policy planners and other large organizations analyze the potential impact of COVID in their neighborhoods, districts, urban areas, rural areas, and how it, they can mitigate the impact of pandemic using the power of location and geospatial software. When the COVID portal went live on March 1st, 2021, the challenge in front of the government was how to inform the citizens where the nearest vaccine center out of the tens of thousands of vaccine centers that had opened up are so that they could quickly pick the nearest one and then book an appointment there working very closely with the AWS team and the government of India 
we geo mapped location mapped all the tens of thousands of vaccine centers and created a widget through our apis which all the coven portal developers had to do was write a few lines of code less than 10 to integrate mapendia maps apis hosted on the scalable aws platform and the end result was that since the day of the launch of the portal crores of citizens i mean i'm talking about billions of transactions were happening wherein people needed to see on the map based on their location where the nearest vaccine centers were and how to get there in the solution that we offered for the coven portal we created an api driven widget a web based widget that could be instantly integrated into the coven portal which allowed users to enter their location through the map or type it by address wherein we would instantly search through the backend the spatially the nearest vaccine centers as well as then render those results as well as give them directions to the nearest one now all of this at a population scale with billions of transactions happening as well as serving the needs of whether urban as well as rural that means covering all the seven and a half lakh villages all the 8000 plus towns anywhere across the 6.3 million kilometers of roads or 3.3 million square kilometers of india's expanse that's the scale that's the complexity but that's also the simplicity and skill uh, efficiency with which this solution could be delivered to all uh, citizens of India. We're happy that the impact of this on the country uh, has been something special. I think India can hold its uh, head high in terms of how we have dealt with the pandemic and uh, companies such as MapMy India and AWS powered by the Intel also can feel good and proud for our contributions to the society. In general, MapIndia Maps and APIs can enable smart, hyper-local governance. And these are the initiatives we are taking with AWS together, wherein we are working on providing solutions for better government, better governance, better ease of living at a population scale providing analytics to pop, uh, policy makers as well as information to citizens based on location and geospatial technologies. MapMindia has spent 25 years optimizing our maps and 17 years optimizing and maturing our cloud location platform so that we can efficiently and scalably serve the needs of billions of people, not just in India, but through our global solution stack maples around the world. We're excited about continuing and scaling our partnership with AWS and Intel in bringing an Atmanirbhar indigenous geospatial suite of solutions for the entire government of India and to serve all sorts of population scale platforms for all Indians. We look forward to the work that we'll do together with AWS and Intel. Thank you very much and back to you, Rahul. Thanks, Rohan, for sharing your perspective. Solving for national scale opportunities requires long-term thinking across data, applications, research, innovation, and citizen outcomes. Latest technologies have to be deployed in an agile manner within an experiential and iterative environment and with frugality. India has already shown this path to the world by creating a portfolio of digital public goods like Coven within the Digital India Initiative. I'm excited to introduce Vikas Tiwari, who leads the solution architect team at AWS India and has closely been working with all the public-private stakeholders to build Coven. Vikas will provide an overview of the solution stack that enabled Coven to scale and reach over 1 billion citizens of India. Vikas, over to you. Thank you, Rahul. Let me provide the technical insights for designing the mission-critical citizen-scale application, Coven. The Coven application was infrastructured in September 2020 
when we discuss with government a small application which can register the citizens can come to the platform can register themselves and it was a simple application the citizens were supposed to get the notification by sms whenever their schedule was booked we gradually opened the application for the first time on 15th of january for the healthcare and the frontline workers we were getting like just around 4 million api hits per day it was a small application there were few uh, challenges and the application team was able to go through that to overcome those challenges and then we saw the next important milestone that was in uh, the month of March when we opened it for the citizens of age 45 plus that time when it was the first time when we opened this portal for the citizens and we saw certain surge coming to the traffic the next important milestone came where we saw a huge surge um, when it was open for the citizens of age 18 plus because this was a time when the COVID wave 2 was very high in India and the citizens were really looking for the, the vaccination doses. We saw a huge surge. There were lots of automated bots which were coming to the platform and we were uh, trying to scale up the application to handle the surge. The next important milestone came on 21st of June when the government announced that they are going to open the walk-ins for 18 plus citizens. And then um, we also saw a first time 10 million plus vaccinations within a day. That was an important milestone. After that, we have seen several days where we have easily done 10 million plus vaccinations within a day. The next important milestone of the application we saw on 17th of September. It coincided with the birthday of PM Modi we saw more than 25 million vaccinations in a single day. We have seen unprecedented scale. We saw more than 70,000 API hits in a per second and more than um, like 2 billion API hits per day. After that, we have recently seen on 20th of October where the system has administered more than a billion vaccination doses. Going forward, I would like to give more insights on the application and the key learnings that we have seen. These stats are shown for the NoSQL database. This is a distributed database. And we would like to showcase here that we have seen on 17th of September, some huge spikes. So we have seen more than 6,000 write transactions per second and more than 144,000 read transactions per second. What's also interesting, while the vaccination drive has really gone up, the number of vaccinations have gone up after July, August timeframe but there are huge spikes between May and June. This is a time where there was a crunch of vaccination doses. The citizens were coming to the portal again and again in search of vaccination. And what we have also uh, seen in this particular time frame that for a single slot, there were thousands of people who were trying to book that. Because of the NoSQL ACID compliant database DynamoDB, we were able to ensure that there's no duplicacy in the system. We were able to achieve an absolute a strongly consistent data set without any duplication in that. So that's how we were able to handle. The other important thing in when in February timeframe when the application started, you can see there's a huge spike in the read workload. It was not because of the surge in the traffic, but there were few unoptimized queries in the system. When the administrators were trying to access that system, it was generated lots of DB queries. In a traditional system, this could have resulted in a downtime for a few days until the developers would have fixed those queries. How Cloud handled, it scaled the entire database. It's a distributed database and, and it prevented that downtime. The developers took a few days to fix the bug, but once it was done, it went smooth. But the scale ensured that there was no downtime. I would also like to emphasize the importance of the native logging and monitoring capabilities of AWS. AWS CloudWatch logging, metering, and the dashboards have been extensively used. The team of Coven, they utilize the AWS X-Ray extensively for the performance testing. Typically, all the developers, they are worried about the average response time. So for us, the average response time was always sub-second, and we were fine with that. But we wanted to raise the bar. We said that we don't want any citizen to face issue with the application. So we were tracking the P99, the 99th percentile, that is the 99% of the request, our target was to make it less than five seconds. And what we ended up, as you can see in the graph, it's less than two seconds. 
that means 99% of the request of the entire application was less than two seconds and that was a great achievement. The way we have utilized these tools and metrics to identify each and every API, identifying what's the root cause of the delay in the API and fine tuning it to ensure that we have a very high robust system. This really helped to, uh, for the adoption of the APIs and integration with third party tools. So we have spoken about the stats of um, the Coven platform. Now let's talk about how to scale, how was the architecture design? So the most important thing is the application team has utilized the building blocks, the managed services from the AWS platform. We have seen several patterns. If you look at containers, we have seen certain duration of times where we have like you know 20 uh, transactions per second. And in the peak events, we have seen hundreds of thousands of transactions in a very short duration of time. So what we have utilized, we have utilized a cloud-based NoSQL database, which is DynamoDB in this scenario. And then that DynamoDB itself, it, it auto grew. It has 600 plus partition. It's more like we are managing a 600 node database cluster. The design principle, which was most important for us was that at any part of the flow, there should not be any component which can't be horizontally scalable. So if you look at the architecture design, the traffic first hits our CDN edge locations. We have heavily done caching for different kind of APIs. If it's a reporting API or a metadata, we are caching it for different interval. If it's the availability, maybe we are caching it for 30 seconds. That ensures we are able to handle the sudden surge of traffic. As shown in the architecture, the traffic starts uh, by hitting the CDN service, which is AWS CloudTrun. We have done several layers of caching on CloudTrun. So depending on the type of API, we have different caching mechanism. For example, if it's a reporting API, we may have done a caching of let's say 15 minutes. If it's a API for metadata, maybe a one day of caching. And if there is an availability API, we are doing 30 seconds of caching. There's a recent counter which has been introduced on the dashboard. For that, we introduced a two seconds of of caching. So these cachings ensure that per two second there's a single hit which is going to the backend. We are protecting our backend system from being overloaded and flooded by the hundreds and thousands of requests which are coming in a very short span of time. So from CDN, we move that traffic to API Gateway, which is again an important part of our strategy where we have done the caching. It has got throttling limits. It ensures the backend system can't be overwhelmed by the number of requests. So behind API Gateway, the traffic enters into the AWS VPC network, where behind a load balancer, there's a Kubernetes cluster. There are a bunch of APIs, microservices, which have been designed. It's a modern architecture, Node.js based application. And then if you look at the uh, architecture, the thick arrows, this is the extreme scale traffic. We wanted to ensure at no given point of time, the traffic should not hit a relational database, which can't horizontally scale for the right operations. The entire right transactions, if you look at the architecture, is handled by the DynamoDB, which is our NoSQL database. Rest of the components, rest of the components are in, uh, designed in offline mode, or I should say asynchronous mode. So be it uh, the application performance monitoring logging or from DynamoDB, we do the uh, streaming of the logs and then that data gets to a data warehouse and that's how the analytics runs and our dashboard.coven.gov.in that website runs. So this is how the architecture has been designed. One thing is extremely important in this entire architecture. There's no single point of failure. All these components scale out of the box without any manual intervention. So once this has been configured, they are just scaling up and down. Considering the scalability, performance, and the flexibility requirements of the Coven platform, we were looking for a platform and the underlying technology which can provide us these features along with security. We selected the third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors for the Coven application. For EKS cluster, the Kubernetes nodes that's powered by the R5 series of EC2 instances. They are using the latest generation of Xeon scalable processors from Intel. Security being the top concern of the application due to the data of a billion citizens, their personal information stored in the platform. Intel's processor provides the total memory encryption. This provides us the capability to encrypt all the memory access from the Intel CPU and this is the next generation of 
the security. So while we have ensured the encryption of data at rest, encryption of data while transit, Intel's processor also provides us encryption while in use. This provides greater protection against hardware physical attacks of the system memory. Apart from these, we are also looking from the future scalability perspective where these processors have built-in acceleration. They include the Intel Deep Learning Boost for exceptional AI inference performance. Looking at the Coven platform, the key components including the EKS cluster, the Elastic Cache Redis cluster, the relational databases Aurora MySQL and the RDS Postgres databases, the data warehouse which is Redshift, we have chosen the Intel's latest scalable Xeon processors and that's one of the key reasons how we were able to handle the load, scalability and the performance of the application without any challenges. Business continuity planning is an extremely important aspect of any solution design for such mission critical applications. Government customers can't expect any data loss. So how we design the application that there's really no single point of failure. If you look at the architecture starting from the edge locations, the CDN, there are sev several edge locations across India. We have done geofencing, but citizens all across the India, they can connect to the network, to the application from these edge locations. When the traffic hits our India region, there also we have got three availability zones and each availability zone is actually one or more data centers. So be it API gateway or a load balancer, Kubernetes application databases, they all are actually deployed across three data centers or availability zones, and the traffic is served and distributed across these three locations. That means when there's a sudden surge on the application, the traffic is equally distributed and we get chance to spike the resources across these three locations. When there's an unexpected downtime, there's a disaster and maybe one of our data center goes down, the application will not be impacting because there are other two data centers which are actively serving the traffic. This architecture allows us to provide near zero RTU and RPO, and which is the key advantage of using a hyperscale cloud platform like AWS, where the reliability of a mission critical application is extremely important. If you look at Coven, if the vaccination stops because of the Coven application not functioning, it halts the vaccination across the country. So it was extremely important to identify an architecture which is resilient to any kind of business continuity risk. Another important aspect of designing such citizen scale application is going deep into each and every aspect. So when we come to know that the government wants us to design a, a appointment or scheduling application, which is like, a, like an airline booking application, you need to have each and every step defined. We identified there are eight steps from registration to, to checking the appointment and then scheduling. We wanted to ensure for each step we have a proper caching mechanism. We should have a proper mechanism how this particular component will scale. And then going forward, in case my backend system fails, what is the failback mechanism? Is there a queue in place which can handle that transaction? The goal, ultimate goal of this application was whatever happens, if a citizen has entered his information into the portal, that information should not be lost. Let's also talk about how AWS helped the application team. We have seen the underlying infrastructure, how it scaled, but it's also important to understand the application team's experience utilizing the cloud services. So the application team was mostly focused on implementing the business functionality. They have a bunch of microservices and they were focused on implementing the business functionality and the features requested by the government. All the underlying components, be it uh, the Kubernetes cluster or the databases, the scaling of it, the reliability, high availability, synchronization of data across clusters were all done by the platform's managed services. So they were focused on just the application. There was no need of any manual intervention. So they were releasing multiple, um, you know, even during the day we have seen multiple deployments and what we have utilized the capabilities of the platform. I'll, I'll take an example. For example, there is an API gateway and what API Gateway provides us a capability that we call is a canary deployment. Earlier, the team was worried about how can we do load testing on the platform and how can we release without proper load testing. 
To avoid any delays, we utilize the API Gateway scannery deployment capability where we diverted 1% of the traffic to the new build to a new different cluster. And that cluster we used to monitor for certain duration, what's the performance, is it able to scale, is there any additional logs or errors in the, in the backend system. Once we are sure that it's able to take the load properly, we used to roll out that deployment, the latest deployment on the other set of cluster like to the 100% of traffic as a rolling update. So without any downtime, we are continuously rolling out new features and the users are continuously utilizing across the country the vaccination features of the platform. There is also no need of pre-calculating the capacity required. The application team can just focus on building the functionality and the application can scale as and when required. One of the most important and significant part of this application that there's not even a single perpetual license which was required to develop this application. It has been completely developed based on the open source and open standard based managed services for, uh, from the AWS stack. The building blocks were there. And this agility was also visible when the team developed the infrastructure as code using the Terraform scripts and the CloudFormation scripts. When PM announced that Coven is going global and as part of the Coven conclave, we invited 150 plus countries. We actually have prepared these kind of scripts. So if any country wants to deploy Coven because of these infra as code templates availability, we can just replicate the entire Coven application in these new customer environments, new countries. So one of the key learning that we have seen as part of this entire journey of Coven that there are several national platforms in the country and we have seen they have evolved over a period of several years. There are so many you know, professionals which are involved in these applications and, and there's a complete dedicated team. What we have seen with Coven, AWS has done the undifferentiated heavy lifting. We have provided the bulk of these managed services. These services have all these years of experience built into it which has provided these services with SLAs of 99.99%, let's say for the Kubernetes cluster, the databases, and, and various other components. With all these building blocks available, exposed to the developers, they were able to quickly roll out these application like Coven and other applications that we have seen during the pandemic time in a matter of weeks. So that's our learning. Let's utilize which is already available. Let's take advantage of the power of hyperscale cloud instead of reinventing the wheel. Thank you and back to you, Rahul. Thank you so much, Vikas, for those awesome data points. Coven continues to serve people, creating history for facilitating inoculation of a large percentage of the world's population with ease. It is now going beyond borders by opening its API and becoming the first of its kind platform open sourcing its code for global adoption, helping millions of beneficiaries from countries worldwide. Truly democratizing healthcare during humanity's biggest existential crisis, Cohen has proved to be an inspiring societal equalizer, serving each human with dignity. Maru Akugara Dukanti Chaleje Ane Lord Varasna Lockdown the Tame Samji Sokocho K Mari Ne Marajeva Ketla Vepario na Pariovani Halat Suase Ave Covidna Madati J vaccination ni prakriya teiche te bow seli ane jarpije tena lide maru ane mara parivarnu vaccination teichukuje Ajeve Garakopan Dukane Aviraje अने एमनी वाचित पर ती जना है जे के एमनू वेक्सिनेसन मां थेई चुग्यु जे अवे लागे जे के दीसे दीसे सुधारो थेई रहे जे अने खरे खर कोविद ना लिदेज करो ना उनों मार्थ से दो साल का पैक अप ये थी हमारी जिंदगी जब लॉकडाउन ने एंटरटेनमेंट इंडस्ट्री को Bollywood के काफी सारे production houses ने Coven के through artists, crew और उनकी families को easily vaccine के दोनों doses दिलाए and thankfully आज वापस शुरू हो चुका है lights, camera, action Imagine थोड़े से clicks आपके phone पे और life फिर से entertaining हो गई The thing I loved most about my job was frequent travelling, you know different cities, different clients, different projects it was just great. 
it kept me sharp on my toes both physically and mentally. My company was one of the first to use Coven to vaccinate our entire workforce of lakhs, including our families. It was just so easy speedy. After almost two years of WFH, I cannot tell you how great it feels going back to office, even if it's just three times a week. Now just look around and you'll see the power of billion doses at work. Mumbai kadi Santos Disli Aika, Rasta or Ekai Munishanai, Sampurna Suksukar, Sagri Kade, Pakta Ambulinsa, Siren Savats, Te Bayanak Dios, Mi Kadi Swissarnai, Kam Nandanai, Roji Rutinai, Kontis Ashanai, He White Dios, Kadi Zanar, Karuna, Kadi Zanar, Maja or Sub Grouper, Covin Vishay Maiti Ali, Sabarto Bi Maja Parivana registration Nuzikili, Baikona Vaccine Yetli. आता माझ्या परिवार मुलीने पण वैक्सीन घेतले माझ्या दोस्तांना विस्तारा सांगितलं वैक्सीन घ्या मी आता आमची रोजी रोटी चालू झाली गाडी चालू झाली आहे सर्व काय व्यवस्थित चाललं आहे लॉकडाऊन का सफर सब तब बारी था क्योंकि आमदनी कम थी और खर्चा बहुत ज्यादा था घर के खर्चे ऑनलाइन पढ़ाई डॉक्टर का ये सब सोच सोच कर रात भर नींद नहीं आ करती थी तो मेरी पड़ोसन ने बताया मेरे तो कोविन का फॉर्म ऑनलाइन भरन थी तो मैंने जाकर मेरी छोरी तो बोला मेरी छोरी ना सबके फॉर्म भरे और एक हफ्ते के अंदर मारता वैक्सीन लग गई भगवान की दुआ तो सब ठीक है और काम धंधा सब स्टार्ट हो गया और घर में खुशियां लौट आई रेड वर्ष को पेंगला बिजनेस स्टार्ट आते ना यंकुल्लू स्टार्ट मलती बका पूरा स्टाफ इंगला चेंज आते नहीं थे आई टेंकुल कोविन ऐप पे यंकुल वैक्सीन के तुम ना यान लगे तुम ना इनके ना फैमिली लगे तुम ना इनके ना स्टाफ लगे तुम ना इनके लोग पूरा वाला वैक्सीन के तुम ना इनके ना बिजनेस ला इम्प्रूव आप हों इनके ना वो आशय हों पूरा वाला मात्रा वैक्सीन के तुम ना माय डॉटर्स फैमिली इज़ इन द यूएस एवरी ईयर वी यूज़ टू विजिट and the borders has opened now. Flights are on. We are planning to visit them very shortly. Chalo, tickets are booked. I come to me ready hoja. Jin spotto ne ki ki jad niye jabe. Amra jachi khub ta antari. The corona ke time pe ham logo ke jo kam dhanda tha, saara ka saara band ho gaya tha. Jiske chalte ham logo ko ghar pe baithna pad gaya. Ab covid ki ab jo injection jo hai company ne hamel Amazon ne lagwaye hain. Ab jo hai sthiti ab dubara jab jo injection laga hai, uske baas se hamara kam kafi aad tak sudar gaya hai. अब पहले जैसे स्थिति बन रही है। मैं एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट देविच पंजाब देविच एस ऑफिसर कम कर रही हैं। ड्यूरिंग कोविड ब्रेकडाउन सानू कई प्रॉब्लम्स आई हैं। फेस टू फेस टीचर्स नाल सारियां मीटिंग्स नहीं सी हो पा रही हैं। सानू कई बार लग गया कि सादली बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है। असी का अच्छा है कि क and we are really very happy about it कि असी वापस अपने काम ते फेर उसे एनर्जी नाल वापस काफी हद तक असी आ चुके हैं और कम नो असी कंटिन्यू कर देते हैं। I am a senior citizen who retired from the bank last year with lot of expectations and lot of desires that I would travel, I would meet friends, I would be going out for long walks, but then all of a sudden the COVID-19 epidemic hit us. And that stranded us all. We were all stranded at home, and it was quite a challenging time where we had to forego all our social contacts, and the situation seemed quite helpless. However, the vaccination came along, the scientific miracles happened, and the COVID app was so useful. We could get appointments, we could get the timings, and I also finally was able to get my vaccination certificate also from the COVID app. So, thank you, COVID. The pain caused by COVID-19 may remain in our minds for years to come, but COVID has inspired hope for the future, a future built by more than a billion dreams, dreams which will build a newer India, ready to convert any challenge into an opportunity. And these are the dreams that will make us win.